All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at multiplying polynomials. We're going to look at delta maths level one, level two, and level three. So just a quick word on polynomials versus binomials. Uh, polynomials is kind of the big branch of um, different types of polynomials. So your binomials, trinomials, monomials, there are all sorts of uh, polynomials. And uh, polynomials have multiple terms, uh, usually squared, cubed, things like that. And then your exponents are always integers. So you're not dealing with like a one half, or, and they're always positive as well. So you're not dealing with like a negative one or a you know one half or a pi radical or a exponent here. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply some polynomials together. Um, the level one takes a binomial and a trinomial and asks you to multiply. Together. Now, this is going to be very similar to how you would multiply a binomial with a binomial. Uh, if you're used to do, using something like FOIL, FOIL works fine as long as you're dealing with two binomials. But if you think of it in terms of distribution, I need to take all the terms in this first polynomial and distribute them to all the different terms in the second polynomial. That's the way we want to think about it. And that's going to work for every single set of polynomials. So in this case, I'm going to take my 2x. I'm going to distribute it to all three terms and then take my one and distribute it to all three terms likewise. So let's go ahead and do that. 2x times 3x squared, that's 6x cubed, right? Uh, 2x minus 5x is negative 10x squared. And then 2x times negative 7 is negative 14x. Now, Let's take the negative one. Now notice the one is negative, so that is going to change all of our signs as we multiply it. So it's going to be minus three x squared plus five x plus seven. All right, now let's go ahead and combine these. We've got six x cubed, negative 10 x squared minus three x squared is minus 13 x squared. Negative 14 x plus five x is negative nine x plus seven. All right, and that's all there is to it. Let's go ahead and put that in. So I'm going to do 6x cubed. So I do um, shift 6 gets you the exponent um, minus 13x squared. But if you wanted to, you could always use uh, this little keyboard here that also will get you your, your exponents if you need. All right, plus 7. Sorry, not equal 7, plus 7. All right, so that looks good. We've got a cubed, a squared. Um, x7 that all looks good let's go ahead and submit that and take a look and yeah there we go now notice they do it a slightly different way they still distribute the whole way across but they the way they set it up is in a box now the, here's a couple of the nice things about using this kind of uh box method there's probably more of a technical term than that um but we'll just call it the box method here so the the nice thing about this is that when you add or combine like terms that are always on your diagonals okay and as we go to trinomials times trinomials that becomes helpful um, and it also just keeps you organized the the trickiest part of multiplying polynomials isn't the math the math is quite simple we're just multiplying terms together the tricky part is keeping track of all of it and staying organized enough that we don't make mistakes along the way or that we jump like the intermediate stuff and just jump straight to the end um, and end up making mistakes that way. So this is a good way. If this is the method that you want to use, um, I would encourage you to use that. So let's uh, look at level two. That was level one. All right, so level two here. Notice we've got two trinomials I'm multiplying together. So in this case, once again, I'm just going to take this first term, multiply it by all terms, take the second term, multiply it by all of the terms in the second polynomial, and same for the third. So let's go ahead and do that. So negative x times x squared, that is going to be negative x to the fourth. Negative x times positive x is negative x cubed. Negative x times 1 is negative x squared. So that's pretty straightforward. I've got this negative 3x here, so negative 3x cubed, x times x squared is x cubed, negative 3x times positive x is negative 3x squared, sorry, you've got um, more of that, don't need two negatives, just one, all right, negative 3x squared, and then minus 3x, all right, last term, let's use our 10, so I've got plus 10x squared plus 10x plus 10. All right, so now let's go ahead and combine. So I've got negative x to the fourth. Let's look at my x cubed terms. I've got 
uh, minus x cubed minus 3x cubed, so that would be minus 4x cubed. Now my x squared term, so I've got one here, uh, one here, and one here. So I've got minus x minus 3x plus 10x, so that's going to be plus 6x squared. I'm sorry, uh, minus x squared mi minus 3x squared plus 10x squared, so plus 6x squared. And then let's look at our x terms. I've got negative 3x plus 10x, so that'll be plus 7x, and then plus 10. So that one works out pretty well. Uh, let's go ahead and submit that and take a look at how they set theirs up. So I've got negative x to the fourth minus 4x cubed plus 6x squared plus 7x plus 10. All right, so here we go. Let's just make sure we've typed this in correctly. That looks good. And submit. And we go. Now, notice how they set it up. Now, here again, here's an advantage of kind of using this box method is that even though the terms, we end up with an extra term, and if we go horizontally like I did, it keeps stretching it. The nice thing is it keeps it nice and organized and neat. So I do recommend this method if that's the way you want to go. Um, if you want to keep doing it horizontally or however else you're doing it, that's fine too, as long as you're getting the right solution. All right, so let's look at one more here. We're not going to solve this the whole way. We're just going to kind of take this in pieces um, and talk about it, and we'll kind of show you how they do it. So notice in this case, instead of having two trinomials, we just have four binomials, okay? And we need to multiply them together. Now, here's how I would do it. There's, there's multiple ways to do this. How I would do it would be I would multiply these first two binomials together, and I'd multiply these second two binomials together, that would get me two sets of trinomials, and then I'd multiply the trinomials. Let me kind of show you what I mean. So I'd do 4x minus 1 times x minus 1. So I'd do uh, 4x minus 1 times x minus 1. So if I multiply that together, 4x times x, 4x squared, minus 4x, minus x, plus 1. Or I could rewrite that as 4x squared, minus 5x, plus one. All right, so there's a trinomial. I'll put this over here for uh, safekeeping. Okay, and then let's go ahead and multiply the last two terms together. I get the 3x plus 2 times x plus 1, and I get 3x squared plus 3x plus 2x plus 1. Or if we simplify that over here, 3x squared plus 5x plus 1. All right, and then what I would do, and I'm not going to do it here because we just did it a second ago, I would multiply those two trinomials together. And that's exactly how Delta Math is going to show you how to do it too. Let me just kind of show you the, uh, show the solution here. Um, notice they take the first two terms, the last two terms, multiply them together. Um, and then take the two trinomials and multiply them together. If you felt like you wanted to multiply the first two together and then multiply the third binomial onto that trinomial and then the fourth binomial onto the, um, uh, the next polynomial, that's fine too. Um, whatever way works for you. Okay, I think this is probably the most straightforward way, but if you feel like there's a different way that makes sense to you and it's getting you there, that's fine too. So. Anyways, that's a review of multiplying polynomials, and it's uh, a review of Delta Math's level one, level two, and level three of multiplying polynomials. The big idea here, guys, is that this is a skill that's going to be assumed in your pre-calc math analysis class, all right? It, you're not gonna spend a lot of time practicing it, and you're going to have to do it a lot. So you want to be efficient, and you also want to be accurate. And so that's really the goal here. If you're going to be successful later on in math, it's not just understanding the new concepts, but being very good at using and doing the old concepts. So hopefully this is helpful. As always, if you have to reach out and ask them. Um, this is Mr. Arslan, and and in happy mapping.